and welcome back to Maya's Reviews, a book podcast and blog. If you're new here, welcome and I hope you stick around. I promise I'll at least try to make it worth your time. So before I get started today, I wanted to shout out my friend Eric because he's awesome. You might want to turn down your headphones a little bit though. (laughs) So yeah, there's that. Uh, Eric rickrolls me all of the time. So I decided I would finally get him back. So anyways, in real seriousness, today's episode I'm super excited about. I absolutely love this novel. And today I will be reviewing The Dead in the Dark by Courtney Gold. thank Wednesday Books and NetGalley for providing me with an arc of this novel in exchange for an honest review. All quotes are taken from The Dead in the Dark by Courtney Gold. There is a little bit of a content warning. Homophobia, child death, murder, claustrophobia, drowning, slurs, violence, and alcohol are all present in this novel. So if you are interested in reading The Dead in the Dark, just be aware of those just in case. I rated everything from plot, setting, characters, writing, and memorability five out of five stars. This novel is literally perfect. I cannot stress how much I love it. It's a haunting novel that explores the depths of grief, sexuality, love, and family. There's also an enemies to lovers slow burn trope, and I love it so much. (laughs) So... The Dead in the Dark was published by Wednesday Books at 352 pages and, as far as I know, is not a part of a series. It's a YA horror fantasy, which YA, if you don't know, is young adult, horror fantasy, LGBT, lesbian, paranormal, mystery, thriller, queer novel. So, a lot of great categories. It's set to be released on August 3rd, 2021, so if you want to pre-order it, you can do that now, I believe. And the book's description, which I got from Goodreads, The dark has been waiting for far too long, and it won't stay hidden any longer. Something is wrong in Snake Bite, Oregon. Oregon? Oregon. Teenagers are disappearing, some turning up dead, the weather isn't normal, and all fingers seem to point to TV's most popular ghost hunters who have just returned to town. Logan Ortiz Woodley, daughter of TV's Perspectors, has never been to Snakebite before, but the moment she and her dads arrive, she starts to get the feeling that there is more secrets buried here than they originally let on. Ashley Barton's boyfriend was the first teen to go missing, and she's felt his presence ever since. But now that the Ortiz Woodleys are in town, his ghost is following her, and the only person Ashley can trust is the mysterious Logan. When Ashley and Logan team up to find out who or what is haunting Snakebite, their investigation reveals truths about the town, their families, and themselves that neither of them are ready for. As the danger intensifies, they realize that their growing feelings for each other could be a light in their darkness. So, honestly, I was hooked from this moment I saw this on NetGalley. I mean, the description, it's everything you want in a novel. You have two lesbian main characters investigating paranormal instances in this town. I mean, it's... Perfect. Anyways, um, The Dead in the Dark tells the story of Logan Ortiz Woodley and Ashley Barton's crossing paths, entangling them in a web of disappearances, murders, and ghosts. An unlikely duo, Logan and Ashley team up to investigate the disappearance of Ashley's boyfriend, Tristan Granger, and attempt to clear Logan's dad's names. So, Logan comes from a dysfunctional gay ghost hunting family. Why did I say ghost hunting like that? Oops. Called the Ortiz Woodleys. And she's closer to her father, Alejo, I believe, rather than Brandon, who both of them run Paraspectors, a ghost hunting show together. Um, 
And just an honorable mention, Logan is lesbian, but the author does a great job of not using their characters as just kind of this token, like, oh, I put it in here, here's your diversity. It's real, like, she's a really well put together and realistic character, and I really, really appreciated and enjoyed that. And despite hating her new home, home, I say with parentheses, of Sno- Snook? <laughs> snake bite, where her fathers are originally from, she attempts to clear her father's name since the locals are determined to place Tristan's disappearance upon her family, specifically Brandon, which I have to say, if I lived in snake bite, I would be a little suspicious, you know, you have a newcomer. I mean, me being into true crime- you kind of learn that, you know, newcomers and then people disappearing as there are newcomers is not a good sign. So I would be suspicious too, but Logan attempts to clear her father's name, even though she's not as close to him as she is to Alejo. So, um, but she's just lovable, spunky, and just badass. I literally love her. Logan was amazing. I mean, Especially the dynamic between her and other people. She just seems to kind of, she stands up for herself, but also is able to work her way into the community that she's found herself in. And then Ashley is a complete polar opposite. Oh, I forgot to mention, Logan grew up all over the place. I mean, because her fathers are running this ghost hunting show. They have to scout out different locations all over the place. So she's, she constantly moved around in her childhood and she talks about multiple times how the only home that she really, I don't know, kind of felt like was home. Wow, my dog just fell off my bed. (laughs) Are you okay, Poppy? She's like, you're weird. Anyways. Logan talks about how the only place she's ever felt sort of at home is L.A. because that's the one place that she's stayed in for a relatively normal amount of time. And now, at the beginning of the novel, she's again getting uprooted from her home to go to this random town that she's never been to that is very set in its ways and not very welcoming of people. So I really, really felt for her. I mean, that's awful anyways to be uprooted from your home, but especially to go to somewhere where you feel like you're not welcome, that's awful. Um, And on to Ashley. So Ashley grew up in Snakebite, so she's a local. Um, And like I said, the town is not too welcoming of those who are not straight, cis, and Christian. And white, so, and, I mean, Logan literally says, I haven't seen any pitchforks yet, so that says a lot about the town that they're at. Um, and Ashley, from the very beginning, kind of seems to be the only one determined still to find Tristan, because he has been missing for a while, and so, you know, as time goes on, your hope kind of dwindles with that. But she's still determined to find him, even though her friends aren't taking the search party serious. And um, they held, I think, like a memorial or, I don't know, terms um, for Tristan. And so she seems for a long period of time to be the only one who's even remotely still hopeful that Tristan is out there, but it kind of makes sense that she thinks he is since she's been having these paranormal experiences ever since Logan's family got here, and she keeps seeing this version of Tristan, so of course she's gonna hold out hope. Um, And then Ashley's friends, Bug and Fran, are also featured quite often in the novel. I personally did not like Fran all that much. She's kind of awful, to be honest. <laughs> when I say not that much, I mean not at all, so. But Bug was kind of okay. It doesn't really center on them much. It's more like they're kind of there just to antagonize or help her along a lot of the time. Um, 
But like I said earlier, the dynamic between Ashley and Logan was really, really powerful. Despite the pressures, expectations, and opinions of those around them, their love for each other prevails, just as Alejo and Brandon's does, which I love Logan's dads so much. They're just adorable. Um, Even though, you know, even though they have their own issues and they're somewhat dysfunctional, like any family to be honest, um, they kind of hold together even when there's ghosts, so yay. (laughs) But Gold's characters were just vibrant and realistic and captivating. And The Dead in the Dark, I said in my review, is not just a novel, but honestly a piece of art. I mean, it's beautiful. The imagery that Gold utilizes allows the reader to become not only attached to, but a part of the story, which I say this quite often, but so many authors are so good at just taking the reader and like plucking them off their couch or bed or wherever you're reading, maybe outside in like a field or something. Um... (laughs) just takes the reader out of where they are and just kind of throws them into the story. So, on it was really amazing. And, um, as I've mentioned, the novel takes place in Snakebite, Oregon, which, don't come at me if I pronounce that wrong. I don't. <laughs> I pronounce a lot of things wrong. Okay, I can't speak half the time. It's fine. Um, which is... The town is a rural, conservative town that is not very accepting. Um, And I'm pretty sure it takes place during modern times since people have phones and I think, like, a Lyft driver is mentioned once. (laughs) I remember the randomest things, but it's fine. Snakebite, besides its non-welcoming views, is also haunted by the dark, which is a force of havoc that causes all kinds of tragedies throughout the novel. So that's awesome. We love a haunted, homophobic, racist town. That's amazing. And I know I usually mix quotes in here, but I feel like, I don't know, I feel like that disrupts the flow, wow, my knuckles just cracked, the flow of what I'm saying, even though I'm all over the place, regardless. Poppy, what are you doing? She's just sitting under my desk looking up at me like, why are you talking about books? Who are you talking to? You're talking to a wall. I'm concerned. That's her inner dialogue. Anyways... (laughs) Um, I think I'm going to put the quotes from now on at the end, just kind of have a little quote section, since, just so that it won't disrupt it any more than I already disrupted it myself. So, okay, so now Poppy's sitting up here with me, so if you hear a bunch of banging around on the microphone, that's probably her. Hi. Okay. And on to the plot. So... Logan, despite not wanting to at all, has to move to Snakebite with her dad's, and it's actually her dad's hometown. Um, she is not welcomed, especially by Ashley Barton. She spends most of her time in her family's hotel, or motel, I guess, watching Paris Specters, because ghost hunting is kind of interesting. Up until Logan realizes Brandon is accused by pretty much the entire town of having something to do with Tristan Granger's disappearance. And Tristan just happens to be Ashley's boyfriend, so. After a lot of arguments and just utter chaos, Ashley and Logan kind of team up in order to find Tristan and clear Brandon's name. But they kind of agree, like, we don't have to be friends, it's fine. But, as the story progresses, Logan and Ashley slowly become closer as everyone around them either seems to vanish into thin air or turn against them. So, that's amazing. We love that. That is an amazing thing to have happen to you. 
And personally, I'd appreciate someone at my side while interacting with ghosts and finding missing people, but wow, that is a loud train. <laughs> this is just an episode of absolute interruption interruptions. We had Wow, that is a really loud train. We had a rickroll at the beginning. We have me absolutely all over the place having to re-record every single thing along the way. And then we have Poppy jumping up and hitting the microphone and it's like boom, boom all over the place. And then now we have a train. So that's amazing. Anyways. <laughs> Like I said, I'd appreciate someone at my side while interacting with ghosts and finding missing people, but they're kind of hesitant at the beginning, which I really don't get because I'm an absolute scaredy cat. I get scared of the weirdest things. Like my cousin, oddly enough, his name's Tristan, but he snuck up on me after, I think it was like a haunted house type thing. Um, it scared the absolute crap out of me, so that was really fun, and I haven't slept since then, so, and there I am again, off on another, <laughs> at least I'm getting more comfortable with you guys, though, so that's good. Anyways, you could have, you can skip past all of that if you wanted to, <laughs> but nevertheless, no matter how they feel about each other, a dark, twisted truth kind of unfolds itself as the story progresses. But the real question is, will it push Ashley and Logan together or pull them apart? I guess you'll have to read The Dead in the Dark to find out. Huh. Weird. <laughs> um, but like, like I said earlier, The Dead in the Dark was just this perfect combination of romance and horror and family and mystery. And Gold has such a unique writing style. It's not poetry, obviously, because this is a novel, but it's it's poetry, okay? And, like, it's just beautiful. Like, everything's just so eloquently described. It's just, like, <laughs> it has a certain aesthetic. But I honestly cannot wait to read more of Gold's works in the future because I'm so glad I was able to read this novel. It's really amazing and I highly recommend that you pre-order the novel or even just wait till it comes out and rent it. <laughs> yes, because we rent books from libraries. Borrow it. Is that the word? <laughs> Borrow it from libraries. Anyways, um, I will actually link the author's website, the books, Goodreads, Amazon, IndieBound, Powell's, and Bookshop pages in the description, so you can pre-order there or even just view other reviews. And like I was saying earlier, here is our little quote section. So I have five quotes from the novel that just really spoke to me, and I like them a lot. So. One of them, she could still feel him here, like there was a line connecting them. Wherever he was, he just needed someone to find him. He just needed someone to bring him home. And that is Ashley talking about Tristan. Another, the silence was pointed like a weapon. These strangers weren't strangers at all. They were enemies. So Logan talking about the town, because snake bite. Another one. They were still three lost things, but they were infinitely far apart. Home wasn't family now. Home was nowhere. So, kind of harking back to how Logan's family is kind of dysfunctional, and she always thought, you know, home was where her family was, but now she feels like she has no family for her. She'd never felt so far away from everyone. She would find him. They would have more nights under the stars. They had skies left to see. So, I believe this is when Ashley and Logan go to a, a party, I guess. Not really a party, but whatever. And they're kind of laying under the stars, and Ashley's just reminded of how her and Tristan used to do this all the time. And, you know, it's really sad. She really misses him, but she eventually gets to be happy, so. And my last quote from... The Dead and the Dark by Courtney Gold. 
This was the kind of thing that snatched the words from people's tongues. There was a killer on the loose. Which, yeah, I think a killer being on the loose would be somewhat a cause for concern, so. <laughs> Again, sorry about the Rick Rickroll at the beginning, but I just had to get back at him, so. Yeah. And that is the end of my review of the dead. Wow, I really can't talk. And that is the end of my review of The Dead in the Dark by Courtney Gold. I really, really hope I'm pronouncing her name right. But I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please check out my blog, Maya's Reviews, at mayagreviews.wordpress.com. And my name is spelled M-A-Y-A. So you can also find me at Maya the Bookworm on Twitter, Goodreads, TikTok, BookBub, and Book Sirens. I'm also on Tumblr at Maya Reviews. If you want me to review your book or even just want to reach out to me, you can email me at mayagbookreviews at gmail.com. I do ask that if you are reaching out to me in regards to a review request or anything of the sort, anything business related, I guess I could say, that you check out my review policy on my blog first and then email me. As of right now, though, uh, I am a little bit backed up on reviews through mid-August, so if you do want to reach out to me as of July 8th, keep that in mind because I may or may not be able to make room for you depending on when you want the review posted how long your novel is, stuff like that. So thank you for listening and happy reading. Thank you so much for putting up with this episode today. It was a chaotic ride for, for, for whatever reason. It just episode five, man. How crazy.